Mikel Moreno to Arsenal. This is why it's such a good transfer for Mikel Arteta. Uh, the transfer is consisting of a £30 million fee to Real Sociedad uh, for someone who's 28 in their prime, just come off the back of Champions League football and, of course, winning the European Championships. I think this is a really, really good transfer for a number of reasons. But let's just start off with uh, who this player is. Six foot two. He's built like a centre back, really, but he's got he's got this kind of mobility and this flexibility. He can play anywhere in the midfield. I think he even came on for Yamal in the final and kind of played right mid, only for a few minutes, of course. But he's someone who's very, very tactically flexible, two footed. He can get out of a press. He can kind of play his way out of a press very, very well. Very, very good passing range and even. For £30 million, this is kind of added value. Uh, Arsenal getting a midfielder that can score goals in the box. He's got a great header on him, uh, and he's scored quite a few goals for Sociedad from a kind of deeper midfield position. So um, I think this is a fantastic transfer in, in terms of the, the full package of what you're getting for relatively little. Today's market, I mean, is he better than Enzo Fernandez? Yes, a third of the price in his prime. And he's just come off of kind of being at Sociedad since 2018 uh, when he first broke into the side. So he's got such a long kind of pedigree at the highest level, very, very highly rated in Spain. And he just complements Mikel Arteta's side. A lot of these transfers, Fiori, Marino, uh, Havertz last season, Declan Rice last season, we have to be honest and say they've not really made any waves. They've been fantastic in terms of performances. I'm saying... There's been no drama. There's been no kind of debate around any of the transfers in the last couple of windows. I think they all just fit in this Arteta mold. And I think Mick, uh, uh, Moreno is going to have a very, very similar role at Arsenal. I don't think there's been many flops for Mick Arteta in the last few years. Um, and I think he'll come in and complement the squad massively. I actually think this transfer helps two big players for Arsenal. The first one is Kai Havertz. This guy scored 13 league goals last season. I think he contributed his fair share in terms of finishes and, and, and nicking in there and getting a few goals. He did. We have to be real and say that. Did he play enough in that position, at, particularly at the start of last season, to really get uh, the gist of it, to have a full season as a basically a number nine? He didn't because he was at, at various points uh, dropping back into midfield. At the start of last season, he was playing in midfield. Uh, off, I think Parsi was injured. Uh, there was this kind of rotation between Jorginho, Declan Rice, um, and of course, um, uh, Odegaard was in there as well. And Kai Havertz found himself as an attacking midfielder where I thought he was very, very limited. And I think he, he isn't a very good attacking midfielder. We have to be honest about that. I think he can link up play decently well, doesn't control the game well enough. He's always looking to get on the end of things. And he's more of a, he's a bit like that Xerxes kind of false you know, nine and a half kind of vibe. And I think playing as a false nine, he definitely uh, has more of an impact on the game. So this season, the reason the Moreno deal is so interesting for, for Kai Havertz and for Kai Havertz fans alike is that I think it just stops all discussion of Kai Havertz dropping into midfield. I don't think it works. Maybe in a League Cup game, if you need to with injuries, then of course he's technically gifted enough and versatile enough to do that kind of role. But this season will be a very interesting experiment because if Moreno comes in, he stretches that squad massively now. You've got Partey, Jorginho, Odegaard. They kind of got rid of Smith Rowe that he didn't quite fancy for whatever reason. And now they've got all these players that can play in midfield. Havertz now has a clear run at playing as a number nine all season. He started up front against Wolves, uh, was... was uh, fantastic in, in terms of the header. It was a good striker's finish in the box. Good, solid header. And I think in his mind, I think Kai Havertz in his mind thinks, if I just got a clear run as a, as a false nine, number nine, whatever you want to say, because of someone like Moreno coming in and kind of guaranteeing up that midfield position, I don't have to drop in deep anymore. I think that does the world of good to Kai Havertz, his form and his, his kind of knowledge of what's going on this season under Mikel Arteta. The second one, I actually think Declan Rice... Um, I think Moreno, actually, we don't know yet. The truth is we don't know yet. We don't know if actually Mick, uh, Mikel Moreno um, will have more of an impact going forward in the Premier League. There's a world he could actually be the box-to-box -box midfielder that a lot of people thought Declan Rice would be. Declan Rice can revert to being more of a sitter and, and kind of spraying balls left to right. I think they can both do that job. And a lot of, if there, if there are any criticisms of, the, of this transfer, is that it doesn't stretch the squad in a different way. It adds strength and it adds a bit more character to the squad, uh, which is comparable to Thomas Partey, which is comparable uh, to Declan Rice. Odegaard's a bit more of a kind of number 10 traditionally, a bit more skillful, has a bit more flair. But Marino and Declan Rice on some level do look 
comparable players. They can arrive late in the box. They can score. They can play it very simple. They work very hard off the ball defensively. And that's another thing I've not said in this video. I think defensively, um, Mick Arteta is looking at defensive reassurance with Califiori coming in. Urien Timbers, a brand new signing, essentially. The keeper's sorted now. I think they'll even move Aaron Ramsey on in the next few weeks. I can see that happening for financial reasons as well as anything else. And the midfield now, I just don't think... How do you play through a midfield that has the legs of Declan Rice, has the legs of Moreno, the legs of Partey, who I think has to stay in this side as well for rotation, particularly in those big Champions League games. I think his experience is crucial. You now have Partey, Jorginho at the base, Declan Rice and Moreno rotating with Odegaard. And Moreno can even play on that right-hand side as well. You can have Moreno and Declan Rice. That's why it's so interesting. It adds this depth um, to the Arsenal uh, eleven. Uh, particularly in those you know later February March Champions League games where he's got Champions League experience but the big thing is Declan Rice we can't forget 100 million pound midfielder scored a few great goals last season the one against Chelsea was absolutely fantastic where he bends it around the defender uh, bends it around the keeper if Moreno does come in as a defensive midfielder you just treat him like a Rodri light. Obviously, he's not of that caliber. He might might one day get there at 28. We're not we're not so sure if he'll be a world class defensive midfielder, but he could come in and, and have that kind of Fernandinho role, let's say, or not Kante in the same way, but a deep line defensive midfielder, win the ball high up, and give Declan Rice a little bit more space to go and attack. And I think Jorginho is at the end of his career. I don't see Jorginho as a long-term replacement. I don't see Jorginho, uh, maybe even Thomas Partey, as being there in the next couple of years. So maybe it's Moreno, Odegaard and Declan Rice, which I still think looks absolutely fantastic and is a borderline world-class midfield. So it, it allows Declan Rice to either, in big games, have protection ahead of him with someone like Moreno who works really, really hard, or have protection behind him, who can you know he does he does the job equally. I think Arsenal are kind of signing a, De a Spanish Declan Rice on some level, maybe a touch more technical ability on the ball in terms of finding a cute pass between the lines. Maybe not the same athleticism as Declan Rice, and you're getting two almost for the price of one because he's so cheap. Um, so I think the transfer on the, the financial level, on the kind of age category, on someone that is keen to join the Premier League, keen to join Arsenal. So many transfers these days. Look at Jao Felix going to Chelsea. You think that is pure mercenary transfer business from Chelsea. And again, the Arsenal, you know, £70 million on Cali Fiori, such a young, exciting defender. Moreno, 28 in his prime, Champions League level midfielder, a winner at the highest level. I think it's fantastic. The debate will be, is it enough to win the Premier League? Is it enough with Kai Havertz down the middle and Jesus coming in, deputising? That'll be a big debate. Can Moreno uh, push anyone else into that false nine position? Could you see more midfielders in that position if, if Havertz and Jesus injured? Could he play false nine? That's just a hypothetical, of course. But I, I do think he, he offers so much versatility. I think it's a very, very good transfer for Arsenal. It makes a lot of sense for me. Uh, if you're talking 50, 60, 70, then it gets a little bit frightening. But £30 million, it's, it's, it's a no-brainer. You, you have to let me know in the comments down below. Should Arsenal be signing a world-class striker? I still think so. Big club. Haven't won the league in 20 years. There's money. I know PSR is coming a little bit close. They might not have sold everyone they want to sell so far this summer. But if there's money out there, even Ivan Tony, last-minute loan deal, pays wages like he did with, with Rea, something like that, out of Brentford, why not? I, f I think Arsenal need a little bit more. But Moreno certainly takes them. It's almost like for like with Ilkay Gundogan coming to, coming to Man City. Obviously, different calibre of player. But I think uh, Moreno kind of offers that extra level of security, especially in the squad if there are any injuries in the business end of the season. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you very, very soon.